So let's start with the first part um, where we will cover topics like um, what model analysis is. Uh, then I will show you uh, where model analysis is used, then how to perform model test and model analysis and what is the difference between uh, those two. I will present you the new model geometry that was just released in the Devsoft X 2021.3. And then uh, I will also show you uh, an example on a data file. So what's model analysis? Uh, model analysis is a process of extracting model parameters. And these model parameters are natural frequencies, damping factors and mode shapes. So it's basically a study of dynamic properties of the system in the frequency domain. And it is an indispensable tool in understanding how structures vibrate and how resistant they are to applied forces. It is based on the structural test measurement or simulated finite element models and allows uh, machines and structures to be tested and optimized. Where should we use model analysis? So it's really used in uh, all kinds of applications from automotive industry, aerospace, civil engineering, power, and also more uh, fun uh, topics like musical instruments or sports equipment and so on. Why do the customers need to use model analysis? So a lot of problems can come uh, due to the product optimization when they are trying to reduce weight, increase efficiency, and they need to validate all the changes and uh, make sure that they are compliant uh, with standards or with um, the intended use of the product. So if you go into each uh, application more deeply where model analysis is used. So for example, it's used on the car frames. So the customer places uh, accelerometers all, all around the car frame, excites it with the shaker and then takes uh, a look at how the structure behaves. Then we can test each car component individually from suspensions, exhausts, uh, brake discs, on the other hand, they can also test engines and at the end, fully equipped car. Um, yeah. So then if we go into the aerospace and defense, uh, one of the most known tests is the ground vibration testing that is done on the aircraft. And this is a large uh, structure. Then also individual components can be tested like landing gears or wings and so on. Also here, the engines can be tested and model analysis is also used for flutter testing, which is one of the most common um, phenomena that exists in aerospace uh, industry. If we go to construction and civil industry, we can find a lot of uh, different areas where uh, we use model analysis on pumps, compressors, uh, in addition also with uh, order tracking, torch vibration, then we can test wind turbines, uh, bridges, and so on. And also in Let's say washing machines need to be tested, uh, loudspeakers and musical instruments. For example, we have a customer that is testing the gramophone like uh, shown on the picture um, on the slides. So what do we need to perform model test and analysis? So uh, at the beginning we need an exciter to excite the structure. And this can be a model shaker or an impact hammer. This depends on our application. So we need to um, take into account what kind of structure we are testing, what is the frequency range and so on. So it really depends on the application. We need force transducers that will acquire this excitation signal. On the other hand, we need accelerometers that would acquire the response signals from the structure. Of course, we need a data acquisition device to display and record the test. For example, Sirius, uh, DV43, 
if you have a large uh, channel count you can use the R4, R8 or HD series so it's up to the number of channels that you want to use. And then of course this uh, device needs to be connected um, to a computer that has the capabilities to analyze um, the results like Devisoft X for example. So how is model analysis performed? So there have been a lot of questions, what's the difference between model test and model analysis? So basically model test um, is measurement procedure. So for, to, um, to do the model test, we need to know what kind of structure we are measuring. Uh, we need to prepare the equipment that we are using. Uh, we need to um, know what kind of excitation technique we will use, the configuration, the geometry. When we do the measurement, we get the frequency response function and also the coherence that is able to validate our measurement. On the other hand, we have the model analysis, which is analysis of model test data. And in this model analysis module, we have a we indicate parameters, model parameters, with the help of mode indicator function, curve fitting algorithms, uh, stabilization diagram, and so on. And to validate the model, uh, we use the AutoMac and the FRF synthesis. So grayed out is also comparison to with uh, finite element model and also the cross MAC matrix, which is currently not supported in Devisoft, but we will add this also in the future. So let's briefly uh, take a look at the model test. Um, the model test is the base for performing model analysis and to even make some conclusions on the structural dynamics of test object. In Devisoft, we support experimental model analysis where objects are excited by artificial forces. And we measure both excitation signals and response signals. And we support a lot of different configurations from single input, single output to single input, multiple output, and also multiple input, multiple output configurations. If we focus now a little bit more uh, to the multiple input, multiple output configuration, um, for that kind of test, we usually use uh, more shakers to excite the structure and also more accelerometers to cover the whole structure. And the advantage of using multiple shaker is that the input force energy is distributed over more locations on the structure. So this is uh, especially um, helpful when we have a large or complex structures and with heavy damping. What is the result? What are the results from model tests? So, of course, the first one and the, maybe the most important one is the frequency response function, also called FRF. And this tells us the ratio between the output response motion and the input excitation force. And what we get is the curve that you see on the picture. And we can tell that at high frequencies, at frequencies with high FRF magnitude, we can tell that the structure is more sensitive and the output response will be relatively high, even at low input force levels. The FRF is a complex vector. So we have an information about the amplitude, phase, real and imaginary part. The second function is the coherence. And this is also one important parameter when we are trying to um, validate if our measurement was successful or not. The coherence is a number between zero and one, and it tells us how good our output spectrum is related to the input spectrum. So it shows us how good our measurement is, basically. So if the coherence is one, the measured response is caused totally by the input power. And if the coherence is less than one, um, it might indicate some noise in our measurement, or we need to repeat the measurement to excite also this um, 
frequencies. The, new ge uh, the geometry, of course, the results from model tests can also be animated. And uh, in the latest release, we just released the new model geometry version, where we support uh, creation of objects like uh, cylinder, uh, sphere, sphere uh, cube, and so on. So the creation of objects is much more easier, and therefore we can uh, create more complex shapes um, much faster. We also implemented advanced interpolation of non-measured points together with color animation. So at the previous versions uh, we could only animate the points that we actually measured and now we also implemented the interpolation. So you just need to connect the unmeasured point with the uh, measured point with the line and also the unmeasured point will be animating. We also implemented the possibility to show the non-deflected shape uh, together with the deflected shape. So, I will show you a data file of, uh, of the measurement. So, how, let me describe a little bit this uh, measurement. So, we, de we conducted the measurement on a demo airplane. Um, where the structure was excited with two shakers and the excitation was measured with two force transducers. The response, uh, we placed six accelerometers uh, all over the structure, as you can see it uh, on the picture, and we measured response at six different points. So uh, all the sensors were connected to Sirius uh, HD, and we used Devisoft model test to uh, have the data. So let's take a look at how uh, the model test setup looks like. So in the model test, we selected shaker as the test method. Uh, we defined our solution, and the excitation source was selected as our own analog out function generator. We excited with the burst random signal and uh, we set the excitation duration to 30%. That means that the 30% of time of defined segment, will uh, the structure will be excited and the other 70% the structure will vibrate freely. So we defined two excitation channels, both of them were force sensors and we define several uh, response channel. Some of them were three axle accelerometers and some of them were axle. So when we take a look at also the signals, you can see uh, the burst random signal, time domain signals. So the structure was excited uh, from Devisoft analog out and we measured the responses. When we take a look at the model test data, um, like I mentioned before, we have the frequency response function and at the peaks there might be an indication of a resonant frequency. The second graph tells us, uh, shows us the coherence or how well our excitation was um, related to our response channels. You can see that the structure is already moving when we are trying to animate each frequency individually. Okay, so um, these are the capabilities of model tests. So it's basically meant for a brief uh, analysis of our data and animation. If we want to go a, ste a step further, we need to have model analysis module. And so this is the next step for, uh, from acquiring the model test data. And in model test, we use uh, different curve fitters and mode indicator functions in order to ad identify model parameters. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, we do the model parameter estimation with the help of mode indicator function that helps us identifying how many uh, modes there are in our measured data. 
Um, then we have also the stabilization diagram that uh, helps to identify stable poles. Um, the poles are stable in frequency and in damping. And the user must select these poles. I will show you also the demo later. And then we have the curve fitting, which is the main uh, process in model parameter estimation where uh, model parameters such as natural frequencies, damping coefficients and mode shapes get extracted from measurement data. In DVSoft, we calculate one of the parameters that we calculate in model analysis module is the complex mode indicator function. So uh, each degree of freedom has its own uh, complex mode indicator function and this is the advantage of, of the function that it can detect closely coupled modes with repeated routes. It is based on the singular value decomposition and uh, it is used to identify all the modes that are included in the model test. So the complex mode indicator function shows us where in the frequency spectrum the resonances are. Then the complex mode indicator function together with the results of uh, LSCF algorithm are shown on the stabilization diagram that helps us to identify stable poles. And this pulse consists of model frequency and damping. After we acquire this data, we need to make a model model validation. And uh, this is the next step after the model parameter estimation process is completed. We, uh, this uh, validation usually includes the MAC inspection and also FRF synthesis for comparison with real measured FRF data. So in Devesoft, we calculate so-called AutoMAC uh, matrix. And AutoMAC is a procedure that can be used to validate the accuracy of model models. It's basically a measure of similarity between estimated mode shape vectors from the same para parameter estimation. So it is a good tool when you are trying to um, see if uh, you measured at enough points so that you avoid spatial aliasing. The next step is the FRF synthesis that is used as a validation tool by comparing the FRFs that were uh, measured with the synthesized one that are uh, uh, synthesized from the estimated model model. And from uh, this comparison, it is possible to see how well the estimated model mimics the dynamics of the actual physical structure. So yeah, let's go back to our uh, data file to analyze it. So from model test, we go to model analysis module. And when we click at all transfer functions, all the transfer functions that are calculated inside model test are automatically recognized by model analysis. If we want to take a closer look how they look like, we have a dedicated tab, uh, transfer function preview. So for each transfer function, we can take a look um, how it looks like. And also with this preview, we can uh, determine the appropriate frequency range for our uh, structure. We also have the possibility to make a damping correction and this damping correction is used when we are using exponential window um, during the model test measurement. We did not in this case, so I will not use the damping correction. Under the calculations, um, all the parameters that I described in my presentation are calculated. So complex mode indicator function, uh, we do the FRF synthesis, we show, show the mode shapes and also the automac matrix. So when we go to review, I go to model analysis screen 
and recalculate the data. So, on the stabilization diagram, I see uh, the complex mode indicator function together with these green circles that indicate stable poles. So what does it really tell us as these green circles? So on the right side, I have the order of polynom that is used to curve feed the data. So, and these green circles shows us which pole is stable at a certain order. Then it is up to the user to select uh, these poles If they are two closely spaced modes, you can easily zoom into the region uh, to select it. When you are done selecting your pulse, uh, you just click recalculate button and you can already see uh, the results. The damping, the stabilization diagram uh, can show the order or the damping. A lot of engineers um, like this view, especially to see uh, the damping of the certain peak in the frequency domain. So on the right side, we have a table with the mode ID that we just selected in the, in the stabilization diagram, together with the frequency and the damping ratio. On the 3D graph, we show the automatic matrix, and this basically tells us how my modes are similar to one each other. If we go to the mode shape animation, um, we also implemented in the new geometry, very easy mode. So we just uh, go from single geometry to mode shapes, and automatically all the modes are um, animating. I can also uh, change the number of columns. So all the modes that I selected previously in the stabilization diagram are shown uh, also as the animation of my structure. If we go to the next section, so we cover the complex mode indicator function, automatic matrix, and the next is FRF synthesis. So I prepared a couple of 2D graphs where we compare measured FRF data with synthesized FRF data. So um, let's make uh, an experiment where I will show you how this uh, works. So let's go, um, let's add a stabilization diagram. And now we will observe what is happening with the synthesized uh, FRFs when I select or unselect a mode. So if I unselect a couple of modes, you can also see how the green curves in the background are not interpolated, uh, are not fitted. And the synthesized FRF looks a lot different than uh, what I actually measured. And when I click on all the peaks in the complex mode indicator function, I can see how well the FRFs are fitted to the measured data. So what will be the next step in uh, model analysis is uh, also to implement the comparison between measured data with uh, finite element uh, mod model. So this will be uh, the next step. Okay, so uh, with that, I would uh, conclude the first part of the presentation and uh, demo and now, it's time for your questions.